Hey, good morning, everyone. It is uh, Monday, July 18th. Let's get everything squared away here. <clears throat> I think we are good. I think I want to get the comments. The comments always foil me. Okay. Comments. No comments and reactions. I just had John take Heidi out of here because she is adorably in the way most of the time. Okay, I can see you guys are logging on. Okay, there we go. Um, Peggy, you're saying you can use some thunderstorms in Southern California? Yeah, no kidding. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's, it's great to be here. Today, we're gonna be doing Katie Fowler's um, installation number five, Principles of Design. Uh, we did on Thursday, or I'm sorry, Wednesday, we did elements of design. So it, they kind of dovetail together, but if we put them all together, your brain would explode. Also, I have to tell you, I hope you enjoyed um, the video that we did of Gua Pai on Friday. That is, that is really haunting me, and I have watched it again and again and again. So if you missed it on Friday, I commission you to go to the podcast, or this thing, whatever it is, and uh, we had some great show and tale, but if you just want to see it again, I think it's about 20 minutes in or something like that. So here we go. Good morning, everybody. All right. Um, so... I have a story to tell you. Oh, and I have a tip if you have a Bernina Q20, all right? I'll talk about that in a little bit. So what happened was many moons ago, my girlfriend worked at Heritage, which in Livermore is a um, independent senior living apartment thing. You know, they fix your meals and stuff like that. But, you know, basically you got your own little kitchen and this and that. And Kathy asked me to come and speak to the ladies and so, and gentlemen, although it was all just ladies there. And, uh, this woman showed up with this cigar band quilt. I, I, my, it's like, I wanted it so badly, but I didn't say anything and who knows what happened to it, but I'd never really seen a, a cigar band quilt before but it really resonated with me, all right? So so this came up in my Facebook feed. I hope I have, oh no, here's another cigar, cigar band quilt that I just snagged off the internet. Um, I believe there's silk, right? If, if anybody wants to correct me on that, I'm fine with that. So, so let's see if this comes up here now. So on Julie Silber's Facebook feed, this came up. And this has to do kind of with that. There are pictures that are on silk, and I think that they were aligned with tobacco products, I think. And so that flashed me back to the gal at Heritage, the lady. And so I actually got hold of Julie. Uh, we're texting right now. She is my resident expert on all things antique quilts, and I thought it might be fun if I do a little interview with her here for us on on the the quilts that were created from the the cloth that was about cigars so i i started looking at the history online and i'm like going okay i will mess it up i will not be able to remember this i mean the best thing i could do would be to sit here and read it to you but i think that would be really fun for julie to give us a little education on those quilts and i think we can dig up a bunch of images on the internet if she doesn't have any, although I would find that really hard to believe. So um, then this all ties together somehow. I have an idea. I want to say, whatever, I have an idea, run in the other direction. We are going to do the Cafe Facet Basket Quilt. Yes, we are. We are going to do improv with the oak shots that are behind me, and I want to restack them in alphabetical color order. <laughs> Suzanne did it in the store, and they're just like, gorgeous. So I'll restack those and tease you when it's the time's appropriate. But somehow within my world, my universe, the word has gotten out that I'm smitten by silk ties. Um, Joan Wolfram sent me all of Dan's. And then at mini group, Dale Fleming, who's been on the show, who's famous for the seven minute circle, peace circle, you want to check that puppy out. 
um, said, did I want some of her husband's ties? And I'm like, of course. She came in with a box and a bag. Her husband was a doctor and she put them on the table and she said something like, this is 40 years of being a doctor. I darn near had to take heart medicine when I saw these ties. And I do think it's hilarious because I've got the, he's got two of the same. I mean, how did that happen? That pink. The one quilt that I made out of ties, I purchased all the, there's actually a segment on the show if you want to go watch it. It was with, we were, when we were with Young Min. And it was very conservative. It was stripes, um, kind of like blue, black, a little bit of gold, maybe a little bit of red. I can't remember. But this is just like, holy smoke. Well, how much fun would that be? And then, and then as I can, if it's all going to tie together, um, as I looked more on Julie Silber's Facebook feed, these quilts came up. Okay. Um, that is a cotton Amish crazy quilt. Would that be kick butt in silk ties? I think so. This is how I get inspired. All right. Okay. Here's another one. Would this be kick butt in silk ties? Uh, yes. All right. So I have an idea and I, and I don't know if this is, if I'm barking up the wrong tree, you guys can let me know. I'll go look at these comments when we're done. What if one of our projects was on silk ties? And if we were to do that, I would say it would probably be more about the more around the holidays. You'd have to start collecting them now. Um, I think we're of a generation uh, where we have access to these ties, where the younger kids don't. Uh, the one that I did, I got the ties up in Groveland, California, at the secondhand shop, and they were fifty cents each. And then I got Lilo a big bag of them too. And the thing about up where the cabin is, it's a retirement community and it's not a wealthy community at all, but everybody goes up there, the men, and they go, forget these ties, they're out of my life, all right? Or whatever. What if we did a project with silk ties? Now, you'd have to start collecting now, which is why I'd say it's going to be four or five months out. And what if I didn't give you a lot of direction? And we all just did. Um, no, Rondi, I will not share with you. <laughs> not till I get first shot. <laughs> oh my God, I almost had a heart attack. All right. Um, <laughs> you go look up in Volcano. <laughs> That's where you're going to find them, Rondi. <laughs> so, what if we did it? And what if there was very little instruction? Uh, there would be parameters parameters, but it would be a TQS Guild Challenge silk ties. And there are some tips in there that we could do, etc. Do you, do you, do you think this would be um, what you'd want to do? Okay, how many ties? More. <laughs> More. <laughs> I mean, how big are you going to make the piece, right? How big are you going to make the piece? So, I have. I thought I lost mine, and I was in a, almost a heart attack mode this um, this weekend. But I found it. I should have held it up to you. Let's see. Uh, okay, I would do silk. I would. Because what happened was I washed some, and and they I washed some, and they fell apart, and they weren't silk. I think with silk you'll get the better sheen. But that said, I don't know. It could be anything. The challenge is ties, and I will, again, have some parameters. Um, start shopping. Go, I wouldn't get the skinny ties, okay? I wouldn't get the skinny ties. You're going to want the more normal ties because basically you're hostage to whatever that tie opens up to and that size. So, yeah, hit thrift shops. If you go to antique shops and stuff like that, they're going to stick it to you. So think of a retirement community and head in that direction. Um, Kathy, I have to plan this far in advance. And, and, and also, if I get smitten with something, guess what? You're going to be smitten with it. Okay, so now let me show you what I did this weekend. But, okay, wait a minute. Where's Julie? Julie, Julie? Oh, so yeah. Oh, man, I could you just see that in silk ties? Holy smoke. And you might have to put some Dupiani in there 
where let's say the peach stuff is. Okay. I finished it. Oh, I finished it. This was hard. It was really hard for me. And um, here we go where I've got um, a, a linen. I'd say the whole quilt is about 36 by 36. And it's a la a class of, of studying under Cindy Needham. Okay. Let's take a little, a little um, close up. So you can see, there we go. I squared up this quilt, which was a real challenge because the linen is not square. And in fact, John said we should be videoing this and one of these little sessions will be on squaring up a quilt. But uh, I have the blue um, linen for the background to match the blue uh, cut work or pulling threads. I, at Guild, I thought it was cut work and then Charlene said, no, she think it's pull threads. Um, the outside edge, we were trying to guess what that was, but that was also pulled threads. I got this for like 20 bucks at Laces. And I mean, it was, it was hard. I'm going to give you two tips. When I got to the, the part where the pulled threads are, not on the edge, but the other parts, you, I did not want to quilt over the threads so I wanted the quilting to remain in the background and so that means there were 10,000 million stop starts. I would say I got about this much done and I threw up my hands in disgust. I thought there is no way I'm, I can do this and what Robin suggested and I did it was I would quilt up to the pulled threads, back stitch, jump over them, back stitch and then go forward and then it, when it was all over I, I, ga I gave it a haircut. Um, the back is a printed fabric so it doesn't show that much. I'm not putting this in competition but it worked. All right. The other thing I want to tell you that I discovered about my Q20. I, I changed the bobbin out. You know how I love my 80 weight and the if you have a Bernina 700 or 800, I don't know about the 500 series, you can only put the bobbin in one way. It, it stops you if it's the wrong way. It's not the truth on the Q20. So what you do is when you, and Charlene told me this, thank you Charlene, when you wind this thread on your Q20, you wind it with Bernina looking you at the face. Okay, I can see Bernina. Then when I put it in the bobbin case, you put it on the inside. Of, they put Bernina on the inside. So, so then what you'll do is thread it up appropriately. And I just called Jennifer, the birth mother of it. She said, gosh, I bet this is going to be opposite. All, in all case, all bobbins, you want them to run clockwise. You don't have to trust me. It's running clockwise, okay? So, Bernina facing out when you wind it, Bernina on the inside when you thread up your bobbin case. Um, I, 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 I missed that memo. I missed that memo. And as Jennifer said, it's like Roseanne, Rosanna, Dana. It's always something. <laughs> so, mark that down. Okay. So, cool. Here we are. All right, Katie Fowler, you raising the roof. Um, today we're going to go over principles of design, which again is kind of dovetails on what we did on Wednesday. So let's go see what Katie Lady is up to today. Katie, it's so good to see you today. Thank you for taking a pause in your life and moving forward with this great class that you're presenting. Well, thanks, Alex. I'm so happy to be here. I feel like I'm sitting in your nest with you. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. So, okay, if you're just finding us today, let me tell you what's been going on. Katie Fowler is just a great creative coach, and we're going through a plethora of exercises. I think we have, we'll have seven in all segments or issues, whatever you want to call this. And I would really recommend that you go back to number one and watch it. I would also really recommend to watch show 1807. Uh, we can't tell you what happened, but it was um, 
I thought some people might cry in the audience. I think they did. Yeah. Remember, we had to go back over there and talk to people and tell them that it was <laughs> talk okay. About- so so we have gone through, I'm looking at my notes, we've gone through the demons in your brain and how to dispel them, um, color, some great color theory tools. Uh, the last one was uh, elements of design, and now we're going to do principles of design, which is different than elements, which kind of blows my mind. Well, and it blows a lot of people's minds, and again, um, We talked last time about how the elements of design really are, it's just a vocabulary for what you're looking at so that you can name what you're looking at and understand it a little bit better. The elements of design are the tools. Okay. So should we get going? I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me show the, the, the first one, right? So the elements of design are the tools. We talked about those last time and the principles of design are how we use the tools. So um, if you go back and watch Elements of Design, you can use any of those using the principles of design to make your composition work. And remember, just like color, just like the Elements of Design, these are tools, not rules, in my opinion. I know there are people who disagree with that, and that's okay. But the principles of design are the ways that we can use the elements of design. So balance. Um, And I think one of the best ways to look at this stuff is to just Google artwork and look at it and see if you can see different things. So you can, I, I did a painting, a quilted painting several years ago. The whole thing was a train wreck but the balance was off the i the the composition wasn't right this side of it was way heavier the el the elements of design were used incorrectly in that quilt because it didn't it and it wasn't comfortable to look at that's how you know if you're using the principles of design correctly your composition is comfortable to look at. So that, now, can I ask a question? Excuse me. Yeah. So that would be like, um, if I were making a quilt, stars, and I were gonna throw in a couple shocking colors, like 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 yellow or whatever, and it's a blue and white quilt, let's just say, mm-hmm. I don't want all the yellow at the bottom. I want it so that it's balanced throughout the quilt, right? Right. Okay. And if you did do it all together, you would want it probably placed symmetrically in one place or the other. Okay. Okay. So it looks like you did it on purpose. Okay. Yeah. It's intentional. Okay. Right. And here, here's a nut. Here's, oh, this is good. So contrast, um, in the last class, the last session, we talked about the white room, right? So that is, that's a room void of color. And the way we could use contrast in that room is to throw in some black pillows or black accessories, black a black vase. Um, and what contrast is, if you go back to the color one, those complementary colors have all that energy because they're 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 a contrast. Interesting. Okay. okay. So contrast is when you see things that are. Um, like your yellow stars in your blue and white quilt, mm-hmm. you need to use balance to place them correctly. But what makes them pop and what makes them special is the contrast. Interesting. All right. Whoa, let me get rid of that one. Okay. All right. Emphasis um, would be if you made your blue and white quilt and you put one big yellow star in the middle, for example. Emphasis is the tool that we use to make something in a piece important. Sometimes I will outline something in a painting, or I'll put contrasting stitching around a shape, or um, emphasis is, is when you want something to stand out from everything else. Okay. 
And again, everybody, in the last class, class seven, we're going to be th putting up quilts and talking about all the different things that we're learning about here. Movement. At the end of the, the um, elements of design session, we you asked me about the Nike swoosh. So that's a shape. And the principle of design that Nike has used is movement. Think about that swoosh. I mean, it moves when you look at it. That was a brilliant branding move. You talked a little bit about your advertising class where the professor had you dissect print ads about why they work. And uh, we can show movement in our artwork in a lot of different ways. Um, value. You've seen quilts that move from light to dark. That's, that's using the principle of movement. You know, I'm sitting there thinking you go Nike and now I'm going Target. It would be interesting to look at logos, people's logos, and dissect them because I imagine all of this stuff is going on in a different way in different logos. But that's an excellent, that is an excellent point. And the Target, it's right where you want to be. I mean, that's what... It, Bullseye. And that, yeah, that would be a fantastic exercise to... Um, learn how to use this vocabulary in your quilt making. Mm -hmm. And this, this stuff doesn't just apply to art. I mean, if you're putting together fabric for a traditional quilt, you don't want it to all be the same value. You want to put right. some pockets in. You want to emphasize certain things. Okay, pattern. Um, we love pattern as quilters. And pattern is just a repetition. So last time we talked a little bit about Barbara Black's um, half square triangle quilt that had a zillion a yeah, half square <laughs> triangles in it. I, I don't know how many different fabrics she used, but the what I can picture are those old postage stamp quilts, which I love. I will never make one. Like you said, Barbara Black did it for us. We don't have to. <laughs> but why all those, why scrap quilts work? The ones that work well is because they're all squares and that's the pattern. Yeah. The pattern stays the same. Okay. Up oh, there we go. I'm it's just loving this. I'm loving this, Katie. Loving this. Well, me too. It's fun to talk about. Scale. Okay, the we have a piece of, of public art in Denver that's a chair with a horse on top of it. So when we shake up the scale, it makes things really interesting. Um, and this, I find this, you can really see this in certain fabric lines. My girlfriend is absolutely crazy about Tilda fabric. And if you pick up a, a like a fat quarter pack of Tilda fabric, it goes from teeny tiny little prints gradually all the way up to large scale prints. And the next time you're looking at quilts, look to see what the different scale of the prints are. Interesting. It's why we, it's why we like cave fabric. You know, it goes from the millefiori stuff to the big flowers. Interesting, interesting. But, okay, no, I'll, I'll wait. I'll no, no, should that. I go to the next one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> do it again. Hold it. I'm going to undo it. Okay. Oh, okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. But <laughs> did I do it right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we don't want too much variation. The reason we like the tilde and the kaif fabric is because it has a lot of unity with the color and the I'm going to say feel or mood of the fabric. So we've probably all seen quilts that don't quite work and probably all made quilts that don't quite work. And it's because there's not enough unity. So I, we, I did an online color class and I pulled out uh, and I don't piece, but I have a huge fabric collection. And so. <laughs> You know, coin collectors don't feel obliged to spend their coins. Right, right. Coin collectors don't feel obligated to lick their stamps and put them on envelopes. And we shouldn't feel obligated to use our fabric. We just want to have it. That's okay. 
anyway, back to the point. I pulled out all my K fabric, different colorways, different, and it all worked together. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out why is that? And it's the, it's value, it's feel, which I don't know what, that's kind of a nebulous one, but it's the idea of how it, how it makes you feel or the mood of it or whatever. Mm -hmm. So unity is important. And it's, I think it's hard to, for example, mix batiks with commercial prints, unless you're really careful about how you're doing that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Something has to be, something has to have unity, either the color, the shape, whatever. There has to be some unity. Well, I think with Cave, I, I think he kind of, while his, I can put my cave in alphabetical order, meaning by colors. And I yep. think it's brilliant how they build on each other. And I think Tula does the same thing so that you can use the old stuff with the new stuff. Don't You don't have to invent a new color when you're designing fabric. Make it so they all flow together. That's my opinion. Right. And you can take two pieces of cave from the same, what do we call it? Collection? Same, two millifiores. Okay. In two different colorways. And they'll work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the unity, there's enough unity that they work together. And so, Ms. Know, I, I, I have, okay, have you said what you need to say? Because I have a comment. Yeah, I believe I have. Okay. Um, you have given us a lot of stuff to noodle on, um, to think about. And again, people, I we've talked about this. I've read the book. I put the presentation together. So now I'm into this about three times. And every time I hear something, it opens another door. And what we're going to do next is what you call, what, a roadmap or something like that? I call them composition maps. Okay. How you get a blank right. sheet of, yeah, from here and to there. So we're going to do that in lesson number six. Lesson number six. This is number five. And I just keep throwing this out so you don't miss the boat. Um, we have Katie's wonderful color tool in the store. We have the book, which is this, what we're doing, plus a, this, we're, we're scratching half the book, I'd say. There's a whole other half we haven't even scratched, okay? Um, if you buy them both, you can buy them separately. If you buy them both together, we're going to throw in the artist journey, which is the start of this whole thing, what she's been doing. Um I, I'm, I am learning so much and I really appreciate your time, Katie lady. Well, I appreciate you, Alex. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And up next, we're going to do, um, fabric, fabric. I keep saying composition or no design composition. Is that what you call? No, I call it maps. What are, I, 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 I try and be too clever sometimes, but they're just ideas for how to put things together. Okay. So it's we've given you a lot of information and you're going, so what? Right. And that's the next lesson. And that will be lesson number six. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. See you soon. Back to the bobbin. <laughs> I went and looked it up and you guys are right. But <laughs> you could probably hear me in the room. Whoa, what's this? What's this? Bottom line. If you put it on the side of your machine, it's going to go in the other direction, the bobbin with the word in the other. But the other thing is whenever you wind a bob, put a bobbin in your case, it, you want it to go clockwise. You guys keep me straight and honest here. Um, okay, so I, I know so much information and I wasn't kidding that I, I've been thinking about this stuff and watching it again and again and again, and it is the so what. Okay, so now what do we do? I'm going to stick by, start looking at company logos. In fact, I gotta go look at the quilt show and see what I think that one is. Um, and and then go from there, John's in here. Whatever, it, okay, so when you wind it on your machine, you wind it with Bernina on the inside. Then when you put it in the bobbin, it's on the outside. The bottom line is you have to, however it's on your machine, it's got to go opposite in, in the tool. Does that make sense, John? Yeah. Okay.
Okay. So, um, Katie's scary show. <laughs> Lana, you can do it. I, I didn't know that we were a haunted house show. <laughs> you can do it. And it's so good. And then we have a follow-up show with her. What happened after she did the dirty deed? Okay. Speaking of the dirty deed, I saw this on Julie Silver's Facebook today, and I can't even believe I'm bringing it up. I was laughing out loud. I think it was on her feed. It's Michelle Obama and Ellen DeGeneres go to a painting lesson. It's about a seven minute thing. Go Google it on YouTube. You, you will be crying. You will be crying. Um, it's not for timid eyes or ears. <laughs> say so okay guys let's see oh organizing alphabetically what I mean by that with your fabric Kathy is that I will have like I'll, go, I'll take a color wheel I'll start with say the reds and then I'll move to the oranges and I'll get them like you know in order I use the wire basket method and then I'll go to yellow then I'll go to green but I put them with like colors so that if I'm working on a piece and I'm like going, oof, I'm working with Kafe, let's just say, I need this color, I can just go dig in that one little section, one, one little section of fabric in that color, rather than it just be all hodgepodge, okay? That's how I do that. Now, let's just not worry about the ties right now. <laughs> just start collecting. And I don't want you to take them apart yet because I'm not sure... Well, we're going to probably want to pre-wash them, and I'm not quite sure the order anymore. Um, if you go and you want to watch my segment, it's um, it's Young Mean Show, but you can just go into the search bar and go Ties, Alex, and it will take you to that show. And um, I'll tell you something that's kind of a bummer. That, I thought that segment was a train wreck when I taped it, and it was because it was the morning after my mom died. And I went and looked at it to remember how to work with silk ties. And I thought, yeah, I pulled that off. <laughs> so, okay. All right, guys. Um, oh, Rhonda, you saw that Ella, Ellen show. You thought you were going to die laughing. I, it was hilarious. Just hilarious. So, um, again, Google, YouTube, Ellen, Michelle Obama, get painting lessons. <laughs> See you Wednesday, and we're going to do the roadmap or the so what. Now I know all this stuff, so what. How, how do I get going? How do I get going? I will see you Wednesday.